a series of organic compounds that can be described by the same general formula. That is homologous series. The answer to you 2.1. Let's go ahead and take a look at 2.2.1. So we're supposed to write down the structural formula of compound C. We have CH3, C, two oxygen and a hydrogen. So let's draw a structure to represent that. We have a carbon with three hydrogens. And after that, we have another carbon, an oxygen, and OH. This is the structural formula of compound C. It looks like we have a carboxylic acid. Let's go ahead and do 2.2.2. Are you pick name of compound D? So the first thing we're looking for is a functional group. Do we have a functional group? Yes, we do. We have this OH. We know that we are dealing with an alcohol. Where do we start numbering our carbons closest to the functional group? As you can see, if we can start counting from the left-hand side, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. If we start counting from the right-hand side, we're going to have 1, 2, 3. So we're supposed to start counting from the left-hand side. So what do we know up to this point? We know that we have butanol. And if you pay attention, you're going to realize that we have a branch on the second carbon. So that's going to be 2 dash methyl butanol. Methyl because our branch has only one carbon. This is the IUPAC name of compound D. 2 methyl butanol. Right, and 2.2.3, homologous series to which F belongs. Let's go ahead and look at F. If you look at F, you should realize that the carbon that is bonded to the oxygen is bonded to two other carbons. It is sandwiched by two other carbons. That is the functional group of ketones. Our answer to 2.2.3. If there was only one carbon to either side of the carbon bonded to the oxygen, then it would be an aldehyde. But in this case, uh, the carbon bonded to the oxygen is sandwiched by two other carbons. So we have ketones. 2.2.4, we're looking for the structural formula of the functional group of E. Most people in these kind of questions they will not see functional group of E. They will only draw the structural formula of E and not the structural formula of the functional group of E. We have to be very uh, perspicacious. So methanol, methanol, that's an aldehyde. The structure of the functional group of an aldehyde, as we were talking about when we were answering F, we have a carbon that is bonded to an oxygen. The only difference here is that we need that carbon to be at the end. How do we show that that carbon is at the end? Because of this hydrogen here. Because we know that if we have hydrogen, then there is nothing here. Because a hydrogen can only accommodate one bond. And there we go. That is the structural formula of the functional group of E. 2.3. For compound A, write down the general formula. Let's go ahead and look at compound A. Compound A is butane. The general formula of alkanes, CnH2n plus 2. Yeah, it is not CnH2n plus 2. No, 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 no. It's all like that. It's CnH2n plus 2. The 2 must be here with 2n. That is 2.3.1. Let's do 2.3.2. Uh, the balanced equation for the oxidation reaction of butane. So butane, that is C4H10 plus O2 to give us CO2 plus H2O. So in this question, even if you don't know how to balance, you have the two of the three marks, even if you don't know how to balance. There's a mark for the reactants and there's a mark for the products. But let's go ahead and balance it because we can. Well, on the left-hand side, we have four carbons. On the right-hand side, we have one. 
So if we put a 4 here, then the left-hand side and the right-hand side are balanced if we are only looking at the carbons. Let's go ahead and look at the hydrogen. 10 hydrogens, 2 hydrogens. So we will put 5 here so that we can have 10 on either side. You have to start with carbon, then hydrogen, and lastly, oxygen. That is the easiest way of doing it. Technically, even if you start with oxygen or hydrogen, it will work, but it will be extremely difficult compared to if you start with carbon, then hydrogen, and lastly, oxygen. Right, so the carbon and the hydrogens are balanced. Let's go ahead and balance uh, the oxygen. On the left-hand side, we have two oxygen atoms. And then on the right-hand side, we have 4 multiplied by 2, that is 8, plus 5 is 13. So on the right-hand side, we have 13. So in order to get 13 on the left-hand side, we have to put 13 divided by 2. Right, but we, we don't want a fraction. If we don't want a fraction, what do we do? We have to multiply out by 2. So if you have a alkane with an even number of carbons, you are always going to multiply out by 2. But then if you have an alkane with an odd number of carbons, you're not going to multiply out. So let's go ahead and multiply out here. We're going to have 2, C4, H10, plus 13, O2, uh, to give us 8, CO2, plus 10, H2O. And yeah, we are done with uh, that equation. Let's move to the following one. 2.4 Compound B reacts with another organic compound from the table to form an ester. What is compound B? Compound B is CH3, CH2, OH. That's, that is an alcohol. We have ethanol as our compound B. Right, let's hear the stories. Write down the letter of the other organic compounds that reacts with B. So for us to have an esterification, we need an alcohol and an acid. So let's go to our table and look for the acid. Our acid in the table is ethanoic acid, compound C. Compound B can only react with compound C to form an ester. We have only one carboxylic acid, which is compound C. So here, the answer to 2.4.1 is C. And 2.4.2, write down the name of the ester that forms. So the first part of the name comes from the alcohol, and the second part of the name comes from the acid. We have ethanol, so our name is going to start with ethyl. If we had propanol, it would start with propyl. And then our acid is ethanoic acid, so we're going to have ethanoid, ethanoid. If it was butanoic acid, it was going to be a butanoid. This is how you name a ester.